also keep in mind, we're gonna talk mostly geology, the, the geology of our region, but there's a bigger picture here. While things are happening in our region, the big world is moving and shaking around the region. And so the continent itself is traveling left and right, up and down, and all around um, as everything else that we'll talk about is going on. Um, so folks often think about Pangea as a supercontinent. There were several supercontinents over time. This one actually happened much later in time than some of the others. Um, Pangea is in the Triassic period. So on your little chart, you can find that Triassic is generally our big reptile, the part that we often hear geologic time. Uh, in your handouts, I also gave you this diagram, because partly because I feel like it's this huge, whoa, moment. Uh, this is from a classic resource, the Geology of Minnesota, Oja Pinkakis and Nash are local geologists who have done an incredible amount of work um, on the region, great resources, really easy to read and understand. Uh, what this diagram is showing us is the placement of Minnesota over time, over the entire time scale that I've given you, uh, geologic time, in relation to the equator. So this little dotted line is the equator, and you can see that the continent is like moving all around, and that's impacting, obviously, climate, and what's going on at the edges of these continents is impacting what's going on in the middle. So I just thought that was an incredible thought to think that our continent has been really zooming around, and by zooming, obviously geologic time, it's pretty hard to, to see anything zooming, but um, I just thought that's a really fun way to think about it. Okay, with that behind us, um, we are going to launch into the fast and dirty version of how the Great Lakes came to be, and feel free to sort of follow along on your timeline if that's helpful to you. If you're the sort of person that wants to see where the numbers fall. Um, we're going to start with the Precambrian. Precambrian basically is everything from the beginning of the Earth until about 550 million years ago when we entered the Cambrian period. It's a huge amount of time. And because of that, we have uh, kind of a smorgasbord of geologic events happening throughout that time period. So we have volcanic events, we have glacial events, we have these really hot, sticky climate, um, really warm climate times, we have seas coming in and out. There's a huge amount of stuff happening, but part of the challenge in the Great Lakes is that uh, because it's such an old period, a lot of other things have happened to pile on top of it, a lot of other impacts have happened. Um, so in parts of the Great Lakes, it's really hard to understand what happened during this, um, this group of time. But generally, Geologists say that this is a period of time where the bedrock we see from this time frame um, is mostly igneous, so volcanic in origin. Uh, along the North Shore here, you're seeing huge amounts of evidence of that. Uh, big bas basaltic magma is flowing out over the Earth, the same kind of basalt that's actually pouring out uh, near Hawaii right now. And they say they estimate that the basalt flows were 100 times the size of present day lakes which is a really big space. So huge flows of basalt. Uh, we also have things like rhyolite. We're gonna talk about your rock samples here in just a sec. Um, things like rhyolite, which is a reddish granitic stone uh, type of rock, moving toward the surface, melting, and then flowing out also. Anyone know where this is? Shovel Point. Shovel Point in Tadaguch up the North Shore. Um, an example of a rhyolitic flow um, out into the lake. So, see these kind of points in between erosions happen over time. Uh, so one example. On your desk, I have some rock samples for you. You're going to get your own rock to take home today, but if you open the containers, uh, you'll see four different kinds of rocks, and feel free to share. Go ahead. Rocks that uh, cooled really quickly. And so when rocks cool, 
all the little parts, all those little minerals, want to organize themselves, uh, you know, as if all of the men and all of the women in this room wanted to have their own little cliques, like no boys allowed, and uh, organize themselves. If I gave you a short amount of time to organize yourselves, you know, male, female, you wouldn't get very far. If I gave you a long time, you'd be able to figure it out. So the smoother of the consistencies um, cooled pretty quickly. The other two that are in here, uh, the darker of the one that's a little jagged is Gabbro. And the lighter, you might have a pinkish one that kind of looks like there's little spots on it, is granite. Uh, the rocks that are related are the grayish. So the Gabbro and the um, the salt are related chemically. They have the same cons consistency, just cooled at different rates. And then the rhyolite and the granite itself are in the same family of rocks. So this is, uh, we're seeing these basalt rhyolite flows out over the Great Lakes. Toward the end, or toward the middle of the Cambrian, uh, we're actually seeing ancient seas come in and ancient ice ages. And um, it's during this period of time where geologists hypothesize that some of the iron ore deposits along the range were actually laid down. Um, the, really, the, the biggest amount of evidence for this time period that we have comes from uh, some uh, oil cores. So cores out of the rock that are finding things like um, some of the sort of single cell kinds of microscopic organisms that might be found there. Um, Because this is a period of time where the Earth is separating, we have this rifting happening. The continent is actually splitting apart, lava flowing out everywhere, uh, quite a mess. One of the geologists locally referred to this period of time as hell on Earth. Like This would be a really intense time to be sitting here um, in this area. Uh, evidence of some of these, what we'll call, um, this one is technically called a dike, where you have this uh, rock coming up, this is younger rock pushing itself up through cracks in the older rock. Uh, you also can call these things intrusions, where you have young rock being pushed up through. Often that rock that's being pushed up through has had more time to organize itself, and so you see these um, things like gabbro and things like granite, and things like anthracite, <coughs> which is often found along sort of the hilltops of the North Shore, being pushed up through older rock and it's a little more organized. You see bigger crystals in that rock, uh, generally. This period of time also sets the stage for our lovely Lake Superior agates, which there are some examples on your tables today. So we're gonna take a quick aside and talk about some of the cool rocks you find on the North Shore uh, that give us a sense that there was this volcanic action going on in the region. Yeah. Can you back up one slide? Sure. Okay. I always think, I always think because Riley starts with R, the red rock, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and there's tons of it around our beaches here, everywhere. Yep. Okay, but when I look at your slide there, that doesn't look like Riley to me because it's not red. It's the weathering. You have the weathering, um, you like got yeah. down into it, it's Riley. Okay, yeah. well, and I'm, I'm just asking. Yeah, no, I, it's a great question. I heard you say that, and I thought, well, I'm not going to argue with you by any means, but it's, just, it's not red that bothers me. Because if I was teaching this to a student, <laughs> yep. you know, I would say, you know, it's the red one, it's the red smooth one, it's, you know, 99% sure that's red light. But looking at that, I would say, mm. And there are some other red smooth types of rocks on the North Shore. Uh, in this little sample here, you can yeah. pretty readily tell that that's the red light, but there are definitely okay. some other examples. Okay. Yep. One of the reasons why um, John Green used to come down to Sugarloaf and do um, geology with us, which is further up the shore, and he said that's why they carry rock hammers, because on the outside of rocks that have been weathered and have tiny organisms yeah. laying in the first layer, yeah. so the rock hammers can leave that away, and then they can see what the true color of the rock is underneath. Mm -hmm. Good points. Do folks want to add other tidbits that you found useful in identifying rocks? Jasper's the shiny red rock. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and Thompsonite is also reddish. Right? And some of the stones are as yeah. well. Yeah. You're going to get a rock ID book in the kit today. Oh, oh, I'm going to go right to you. <laughs> <laughs>